I'm Dr. Darnell and welcome to this video about Management Foundation Scientific Management. At the end of the session you will be able to discuss Taylor's theory of scientific management, explain the role of scientific management in increasing productivity, explain the advantages and disadvantages of scientific management, and summarize time and motion studies. Frederick Taylor is known as the father of scientific management theory. As a foreman at Midvale Steel Company in 1880, Taylor was consistently impressed by the failure of his team members to produce more than about one-third of what he deemed to be a good day's work. Taylor was determined to discover, by scientific methods, how long it should take to perform each given piece of work. And it was in the fall of 1882 that he started to put the first features of scientific management into operation. Taylor summed up his efficiency techniques in his 1911 book, the Principles of Scientific Management, which in 2001, fellows of the, Pro of the Academy of Management voted it as the most influential management book of the 20th century. Scientific management is a theory of management that analyzes and synthesizes workflows. Its main objective is improving economic efficiency, especially labor productivity. It was one of the earliest attempts to apply science to the process of engineering and management. Scientific management is sometimes known as Taylorism after its founder, Frederick Taylor. Taylor began his theory in development in the United States during the 1880s and 1890s within manufacturing industries, especially steel. Its peak of influence came in the 1910s. After Taylor's death in 1915, scientific management as a standalone school of thought waned as its principles were assimilated into other schools of management thought. Background of scientific management. Factories at the time were springing up everywhere and standard ways of working didn't exist to manage large groups of people and handle increasingly complex work. Taylor saw this need and he wanted to step in and make organizations more standardized, efficient, and productive by studying their work processes closely. Scientific management is the term he used. He conducted a lot of studies and wrote books about it, and he wanted to study the human element of the production equation. This basically meant applying science to work, studying tasks carefully, systematically at the micro level to speed up work. He wanted to break away from the cumbersome rules of thumb that he saw as unproven and inefficient. Taylor explained how productivity can be greatly improved by applying the scientific method. The scientific method used in management is designed to train workers in the best way possible and to get production, the most production, out of employees. Scientific management took away most of the autonomy from the working person and simplified jobs down to a specific task. Taylor felt that even the simplest task could be managed in a way to greatly improve productivity, and he felt that the scientific method greatly outproduced the initiative incentive method because the initiative incentive method increased productivity but placed responsibility on the worker to figure out how to do it. Taylor then began to implement time in motion studies where he used the stopwatch to time workers sequence of, emotions, of motions to determine the best method for optimal performance. Scientific management method did increase productivity but it also had its drawbacks. The core dimension of the skill, variety, task identity, task significance, autonomy, and feedback were all missing from the picture of scientific management. Later theorists also argued that the method left out the human equation and failed to treat the workers as thinking, feeling human beings. After many years of studies and experiments, Taylor came down to four principles of scientific management. One, replace rule of thumb work methods with methods based on scientific study of the task. Two, scientifically select, train, and develop each worker rather than passively leaving them to train themselves. Three, cooperate with workers to ensure that scientifically developed methods are being followed. And four, divide the work nearly equally between managers and workers so that the managers apply scientific principles to planning the work and workers perform the task. Taylor suggested that management should try to find the best ways of doing different jobs and introduce standard materials, tools, and equipment to reduce waste. Management should select the right types of people and provide them with adequate training to increase production, production, quantity, and quality. Management must establish congenial working environments for the employees to be optimally productive. 
We can summarize scientific management in three dimensions. Its general approach to management, its contributions to management and productivity, and its criticism. The general approach, it developed a standard method for performing each job, selected workers with appropriate abilities for each job, and tra trained workers in standard methods. It supported workers by planning their work and eliminating interruptions, and provided wage incentives for workers' increased output. Some of its contributions were that it demonstrated the importance of compensation for performance, initiated the careful study of tasks and jobs, and demonstrated the importance of personnel in selection and training. Some of its criticisms are that it did not appreciate the social contact of work and the higher needs of workers. It did not acknowledge variance among individuals. It tended to regard workers as uninformed and ignored their ideas and suggestions. Scientific management was, was extended by other pioneers. There was Frank and Lillian Gilberth. The Gilberth was a husband and wife team who helped find more efficient ways for workers to produce output. Frank Gilbert made his most important contribution in the field of bricklaying. He changed an 18-step process into a five-step process and increased productivity by 200%. Another area which, in which Frank and Lillian Gilbert made substantial contributions was assisting the handicapped. In particular, they helped develop vocational training methods for assisting disabled veterans. Interestingly, Steve Martin's movie, Cheaper by the Dozen, was based on the lives of the Gilberts. Henry Gantt developed Gantt Chart to improve working efficiency through planning and scheduling. Gantt Chart is still in use today. Harrington Emerson advanced job specialization in both managerial and operating jobs. Emerson was an advocate of specialized management roles in organizations. He testified before the Interstate Commerce Commission that the railroad could save a million dollars a day by using scientific management. Although scientific management as a distinct theory or school of thought was obsolete by the 1930s, most of its themes are still important parts of industrial engineering and management today. These include synthesis, logic, rationality, empiricism, work ethic, efficiency, elimination of waste, and standardization of best practices. Scientific management led to a disdain for tradition preserved merely for its own sake or to protect the social status of a particular worker with particular skill sets. The transformation of craft into mass production and knowledge transfer between workers and from workers into tools, processes, and documentation. Businesses today that rely heavily on scientific management concepts. Let's discuss scientific management theories advantages and disadvantages. As you can see, there's a nice long list of both advantages and disadvantages, and we will not discuss them all here, but we'll explore a few from each category. The first advantage is scientific management enhanced production. It's responsible for enhanced production because it concentrates on steady improvements in the business operations. There's also fruitful cooperation between managers and workers. Enhanced, enhanced teamwork is achieved. This harmonious relationship between management and workers assists in product, gains in production within the organization. Next is the cost of production is reduced. The mechanization and the latest use of technology in the production of goods enhances productivity. Since there is enhanced large-scale production, there is decrease in per unit cost of production. Benefit to customer. With the help of scientific management theory, there are triple benefits for customers. Customers pay lower prices and get the best quality product. They are also, they are also able to gain attain better standard of living. Another advantage is the best use of resources and development. With scientific techniques followed, there is better utilization of resources. This in turn leads to increased productivity. Waste and efficiency of all means are eradicated with the theory. Also, with the help of scientific investigation, this leads to technological development. These new developments also follow other qualitative and quantitative techniques in modern studies are based on some scientific management theory. Some of the disadvantages is that scientific management requires huge capital. The theory requires an investment of huge capital and is considered a costly system. The establishment of work study, planning department, training of workers, and standardization requires more money. Another disadvantage is that scientific management can lead to a de de be considered a demotivating approach. With the application of scientific approach of management, employees the employees are focused on how well they perform their job and their statistics. And results, and, and results produced along the time frame. With this result, employees may feel underestimated and also feel alienated in such a way to detract, direct them to absenteeism. It's not so suitable for teams. Scientific management does not work fruitful teams or groups as they have 
the capability to abuse and exploit human beings, which may lead to conflicts. There is no scope for individual performance in this theory. Functional foremanship, followed by Taylor, where the workers are required to report to boss eight bosses in this way, unity of command is broken, where the worker needs to report to just one boss. When there's no unity of command, there is confusion and disorder in the organization. Taylor pioneered time and motion studies, which greatly influence business even today. Almost every service or manufacturing is influenced by time and motion study. Taylor defined time as the least amount of time on average it would take to perform each task and even each part of a task. Motion was defined as what were the fewest number of motions required for each small task. So let's look at a time and motion study. What Taylor wanted to figure out was the least amount of time on average it took to perform each task, or even each part of a task. He really broke it down. What were the fewest number of motions required for each small task? He wanted employees, basically, to work like they were machines. He was a mechanical engineer by training and background, and so that's what he wanted to do, design and build machines. He wanted people to act like His shovel experiments, early time and motion studies, were a great example the idea here, he said, is, hey, you know what? Instead of just using whatever shovel, why don't we figure out the amount, just the exact amount of poundage a shovel would hold to make the work the fastest? So he did experiments here. He took 10 guys, lined them up, and gave them a pile of sand or coal. And he said, I want you to take this shovel, each with, he held about 26 pounds, and move your piles from here about 10 feet to over there. And so they worked at it all day, and he kept track of everything with a clipboard and timer. And at the end of the day, they went home. And then overnight, he cut off a little piece of metal off of each shovel so that it was about a pound lighter. In other words, it held about a pound less of charcoal or sand. And then they came back the next morning, and he told the workers, okay, remember those piles you moved? Now I want you to move them back to where they were in the first place, which was probably a little frustrating for the employees, but they were getting paid, so they did it. At the end of this, every night, he kept taking a little more off the shovel until he saw the number peak. And every time he took a little bit off, the numbers went up. And he noticed that he kept taking more and more off the shovel, and then the numbers started to go down. They were actually finishing their piles later in the day, each day on average. And so he said, Oh, maybe we've passed the midpoint. So he went back slightly to larger shovels, and sure enough, the numbers went right back in the right direction. He settled on 21.5 pounds, the perfect amount of sand or coal that you could fit in a shovel to move the most amount in a given day. So that amount meant you could move it faster because it was a little lighter. It also meant you could take fewer trips. So if you were using a really small shovel, you'd have to use more motions and more trips to the pile. So he figured out the ideal amount of time in motion for shoveling. That's why if you go into a hardware store, you'll see all kinds of different shovels, different shapes, and different sizes. This was all influenced by Frederick Taylor and his experiments and his thinking by extension after that. In this session, we discussed Taylor's theory of scientific management. We explained the role of scientific management in producing increasing productivity. We explain the advantages and disadvantages of scientific management, and we summarize the time in motion study. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.